the great conservative movement of America and of our time. A brush fire of freedom is being lit all over this country. We, as an irate, tireless American populace, will overcome the few radical leftists that control the levers of power today. Joe Biden's failed economic policies has given us inflation like you can't believe. And the border is in disarray. It's amazing how few of the people commenting on this have actually bothered to go see what's happening. Well, Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona actually went to the border. Biggs, where's Andy? Boy, oh boy, Andy. He got... There's a guy. He's tough. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this edition of What's the Bigs Idea? It's a podcast we put out regularly, and um, I'm so happy you join us. Um, I remind you, if you're interested in seeing um, about the more about the border, you can go to our um, office-produced documentary called Alien Invasion. Just go to any one of our social media sites, and it can link you into to see that important um, information. I think you'll find it interesting. It's very well done. I thank my staff again for working so hard on that. Um, we're we're in a, an incredible age. Uh, what we see going on is every institution in America is under attack. And today I have brought a special guest in to talk specifically about the education, K-12 education system in Arizona, which continues to be under attack. This is, she's a mom. She's an Arizona mom. She's uh, prolific in writing and researching and working on this issue. She's a uh, fearless. She's a school reform advocate. She is Peggy McLean. Peggy, um, welcome to What's the Big's Idea? Thank you. <laughs> We're glad Thank to have you. you. With us. We're glad to have you with us today. Thanks so much. Let's let's, let's get at it. We're for for those who are going to be tuning in. We're going to be talking about wokeness in Arizona today, particularly in the ed public education sector. Um, we're going to talk about Peggy uh, runs or, or works on a website called Not In Our Schools. I've pulled it up. It is um, a wealth and font of information. And she, as I say, she's very prolific in writing. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the solutions or and also the implications if we don't solve this problem. So Peggy, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your work. Thanks for, for your work in the community. Thanks for the research. Thanks for the writing you do, your courage. Um, it's not easy being out there in the front lines um, and being uh, attacked, as I'm sure you are, uh, for your um, pr very principled stance and your hard work. So thank you again. Now, so in Arizona, wokeness is compromising our public education. And whether it's CRT, uh, gender equity, uh, Planned Parenthood coming in with their with their curriculum. How did we get here? How did how did we get here? Well, that's a good question. I became involved about ten years ago, nine years ago, when Planned Parenthood tried to get into. Well, they were successful getting into the Tempe uh, Union High School District. Um, they were watered down, but they did get in. And I thought that was just the beginning, but I, I think the seeds were planted well before that, but we weren't aware. Um, we didn't really know the, the code words. And um, so anyway, I, I thought it was just my Planned Parenthood and push them out of schools, make people aware. But now it's become, as you know, anything, anything sexual crazy sexual sexualization of children, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, preschoolers. And um, it, it, as, as I exposed more and as people would send me more information, it just seems to have gotten worse. Now, I think obviously with COVID people were at home and they were seeing what their children were, were learning and some of the material, but it, it was bad way before then. And I think in Arizona, I will put my money on the big problem is red for red that came in in 2018. Yeah. Um, before we get to get to talking uh, about red for red and take it down that way, because I do think it's interesting, but I, I agree with you that 
that it was only overtly noticeable because of COVID and the shutdowns and, and children being at home, parents being at home with their kids more, seeing more firsthand. But I think, I think we've watched this, this move um, for actually a good generation or so mm -hmm. uh, to get to this point. But, but one of the things uh, I, I think we should expand on, because I think if you're not watching, you don't, and not paying attention, it's hard for you to conceive. When you say sexualization of preschoolers, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, uh, the youngest children that, that the public schools have access to. And then I have a story to tell you uh, about um, one school superintendent I dealt with quite some time ago. But I, I'm, I'm very curious to know, I know you want to be respectful and delicate, uh, but what do you mean when you say sexualization of a preschooler? Oh, it could be anything from pronouns. Um, if you Planned Parenthood for a while on their website had information about um, sex, sex, sex ed for preschoolers that young. So I don't know if it's still up there. Um, they might change their tactic, tactics a little bit as they're exposed. But um, pronouns, teachers just being pretty open about their own sexuality in front of little kids. Um, it could be the books that are in the schools. Um, it could, a lot of times it's pro professional development that's coming in the back door and not through um, the school board. So, all right, when I say school board, where the school board has to approve books, um, yeah. it come, the professional development can come in through the back door. And uh, I, I saw that a lot when um, maybe I'm jumping ahead here, but when Kathy Hoffman took over for uh, the Arizona Department of Education, there regularly there were professional development um, seminars being held that, that were teachers were being encouraged to go to on weekends um, about gay, GL, LGBTQ lifestyle, whatever, and working with kids. So um, the focus is just not primarily on academics at all anymore, as probably everybody knows. So that's that's very interesting because um, we do see that it's not just sexualization, it's CRT, it's, it's an entire woke agenda that's going on from the, you know, from preschool on up. And what I wanted to share with you is when I was in the state legislature, uh, there was a move to um, get to preschool, which I opposed. I mean, I mean, Kindergarten was, they wanted to mandate kindergarten. I wasn't for mandating kindergarten. I didn't go to kindergarten. So they ended up mandating kindergarten. Then they wanted to go to preschool and mandate that. And I and I actually brought in, uh, I was talking to a school superintendent in the district that I represented. And I said, what is it with you? I said, first it was kindergarten, now it's preschool. Is there any age too early for you to have the schools intervene between the parents and the child? And he's seen, and I'm not kidding you. What he told me was, we we I would take them immediately after birth. Oh wow! That and that that's a real statement, you know. And the guy was, uh, you know, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing it because I don't think he was a, a, a you know sexualization kind of guy. He wasn't a CRT guy. He was just a believer that the schools uh, could do such a far better job of raising children mm -hmm. than parents. And I think that's where the attitude was born. And then you marry it with the, the really radicalization of, of sexuality and gender in our society today. You marry that with the outrageous, uh, deceptively named critical race theory. Um, and, and, you, and you bring that up from the halls of the post-secondary ed, ed academics mm -hmm. from, the, from the professor's lounges out and, and, and you get this bizarre, weird deal um, where they, everything's about sex and systemic racism. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you um, about Kathy Hoffman. Um, you sued Kathy Hoffman, who is the state superintendent of public instruction in Arizona. And she's running for, uh, wait, I don't think I could say that, but I won't say that, but, but there's elections coming up. I'll just say that. And, and anyway, so, so Kathy Hoffman is out there. Um, and my question for you is just tell us about 
what prompted the lawsuit. And my understanding is that there's, there's an injunction filed against Kathy Hoffman. Um, and it's regarding a couple of, of websites that she was sponsoring. Right. Okay. So back in May, um, Breitbart actually broke the story that there's, uh, uh, if you go on the Arizona Department of Education website, there's links to something called Q Chat. Um, I think the other one's Gender Chat. And supposedly you're supposed to be 13 to 19, I believe, to use those sites, but anybody can go on. You can lie about your age. Um, there's just no checks and balances. And basically, these kids are talking to strangers about their sexuality. There's personal questions, and the, and the um, obviously the Q. I think it's supposed to stand for queer. I don't know. I you know they they're always changing their definitions, but um, it's definitely focused on sexuality. But the main thing is there's a quick escape button at the bottom. So you can, if your parents walk in the room, you can click it and it goes to Google. So the parents think you're just looking at, you know, searching Google. So I think there's a few state laws being broken, but the one in particular, is that they're making it pretty clear that they're hiding this from parents. And that's against the law. Um, it's statute, state statute 1-602. And, um, any attempt to encourage a minor child to withhold information from the child's parents should be ground for discipline of an employee of the state, any political subdivision of the state, or any other government entity. So, um, so obviously there was a lot of hoopla when Breitbart did the story, and as as usual, nothing was done. And I remember telling a few friends at the time, "I'm doing something about this. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm doing something about this." And I started researching how to sue or how to file a claim or against the state um, office holder. And there's, it's, it's laid out in the Arizona statutes, which you probably know. Yeah. And then um, I did get some help. I kind of hit a wall, but got some help as to how, how to lay it out and decided to do it. So I, I'm just tired of waiting for the right legislator, the right the right person in office and honestly the right policy group we can't be waiting for policy groups we're always waiting for that you know whoever waiting for someone else and this is our country is we the people right so i'm going to try to handle it so so it's interesting to me is so you 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 crafted the lawsuit yourself um you went through the the process which isn't always really the easiest thing to do to go through a process to sue uh, an elected official. And you got an injunction. Um, it's a request for an injunction. Oh, so you filed a request for an injunction. Yeah, okay. to take the, uh, the website down, the, the links down. It's a very simple solution for Kathy Hoffman. Just take them down. And is she, is she fighting this? Yes. There's been a very, we think it's a very expensive, based on the, the address of the law firm, uh, probably a very expensive law firm to fight it. And they, um, you know, on September 22nd, filed a motion to, to dismiss in Superior Court. That's the latest I've heard. Okay. So and is, is I don't know who's paying for that law, the, for that law, law firm. That would, well, that's, you, pro you probably are. You probably uh, yes, are. yes. And if it's, anybody can give me that proof. <laughs> That would be yeah, I, there's no, there's not a dot in my mind. Now, here's the way it works: is, is normally an attorney, then the Department of Education has attorneys general assigned to them to work with them. And in this particular case, um, you, you're, you're indicating that maybe they have an outside lawyer that's that mm -hmm. on the, a private lawyer that they've retained in this, and the cost for a private retained lawyer is many hundreds of dollars per hour. Mm -hmm. and, um, that doesn't just materialize. That that's going to come from uh, the taxpayer. It's I that that would be my guess. But um, I was surprised that, that the attorney general wasn't handling it. I just assumed. Well, I mean, if I, normally it would be. Normally, I would assume that the attorney general would handle it. But um, if you if you're indicating it might be a private attorney, but we'll, I'm interested in to see. Uh, so. When the kid, when a kid would go on this website, 
they would have to give up personal information, right? Yes. What 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 happens to that personal information That's, that the kid? Yeah, another up? thing, who knows what's being done with that? Arizona, I've been to a few meetings in the last year, and um, Arizona is ranked, at least they're saying at this meeting, these meetings, it's the top um, sex um, sex trafficking state in the country. So, in fact, one of the meetings I went to showed how they groom children uh, using devices and then lure them to a, a meeting place. And, and then there it is. They're, they're part of the sex trafficking system. It's hard to believe, but that is how it's done oftentimes. Um, that kind of scares me that this, whoever's on the other end could be using this information or do they sell it? Yeah. And who is on the other end? When we send our kids to school, we can, uh, you know, we can see the certification of teachers and staff and that sort of thing. There's fingerprints and there's at least some um, a safety protocol. So we know who our kids are interacting with. But this is, who knows? And, and the fact that the state is paying for this, that this is through a state website. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all, I mean, it, it's awful. And it gets to the, the whole notion of, of, of grooming, mm -hmm. you know, where you have sexual predators who groom uh, children and, and vulnerable people to try to, to, as you say, sexualize them, exploit them. And uh, I am, I'm outraged that the Department of Education, the secretary, uh, superintendent of, of public instruction in Arizona would be doing that. And then specifically, not just advise children not to tell their parents. In other words, insert the state between the child and the parent, mm -hmm. but, but find ways to make it um, secretive, a mystery. So we're, so we're that the parents don't know they're, they're, they're going to be oblivious. And, and a lot of parents will not even believe what we're talking about, to be honest with you. But, but it's it is an outrage, and I, I appreciate what you've done. I mean, uh, I wrote down what you said because I think you and I were talking a little bit beforehand, and I and I started the episode talking about this. Every institution's under attack, and you said I wrote down quote We're always waiting, close quote. And you're tired of waiting. We all I, and we are tired of waiting. Um, I, I do believe that it's a minority of people that are basically trying to um, take the country in a direction that's very different than what the majority of this country wants. And and this is certainly an area where you are. And I, I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, definitely a minority, but they're loud and they have the media and they're well funded. You know, where a lot of that funding comes from is Planned Parenthood. Yeah, a lot of th this Q chat is partially sponsored by Planned Parenthood. So even if I know in Arizona right now, it's it's like a back and forth, whether abortions are allowed, even if it ends up that they're not allowed, we have to keep a really close eye on Planned Parenthood because they are now pr pushing trans transitioning kids coming in for transgender service services. Yeah. Um, and besides the fact that they will help take women to uh, have an abortion in another state, but they're still targeting children. They don't like children, period. So you know, and the crazy, the crazy thing about it is um, they get money from the federal government, a lot of them. And I mean yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars. And there are many of us that have tried to stop that. But um, the Democrats mm -hmm. in Congress won't hear about that. They, 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 they fight us tooth and nail in trying to defund Planned Parenthood. It's just, it's actually kind of disgusting. Um, but I wanted to ask you this because um, you have a website uh, that, that people ought to go to. It's notinourschools.net, notinourschools.net. Tell me, you know, what's the purpose of this website? What made you interested in exposing schools or school staff who invite Planned Parenthood in, into the classroom? So after our situation in uh, the Tempe Union um, 
high school district and trying to keep Planned Parenthood out, I noticed that the media was pretty weak as far as their reporting. No surprise. <laughs> there, there was even a, there was even a local reporter who I think kind of sided with us, but never oh. wrote anything that. Um, anyway, I, I, probably the editors shut her down. So I decided I got to do something. I've, I've got to start writing and just getting something out there. And so I put this again with help, put this website together. And I thought, you know, if one or two people read it, whatever, it, it kind of helped me organize some of the thoughts and some of the concerns and, um, and alternative media, basically. So I try to back everything up with links. Some of the links I notice when I go to older posts are gone or they're down or, um, so I'm doing a lot with screenshots too, because I mean, links can get old, but also some places might want to take their links down once they're exposed. So I do a lot with screenshots too. So, um, I have the evidence, but so yeah, I just started doing FOIAs. I would hear where Planned Parenthood was, um, and just started putting it, things together and first started, I thought I could save the country, <laughs> but, um, and I was just going to focus on Planned Parenthood. I really was adamant about just focusing on Planned Parenthood, but it turns out the LGBTQ alphabet um, got just too big. And it's also, like I say, it's tied with Planned Parenthood too. It's all one. And now we've got a lot of, um, ne we're networking across the country. So we've got people in uh, just about every state doing something. So we're, I'm just focusing on Arizona the last few years. So uh, that's interesting. So you, you've spread it out. Have you, so have you had success with the website? I mean, it sounds like you've had success in sp spreading it out. But have you ever seen, uh, have you seen curriculum reversals um, with your efforts? Um, well, when I say we network, it's not the my website necessarily, but it's just through a coalition of parents and um, some uh, elected officials and concerned citizens that they start to see something in their school and they, um, they, we, we start networking and then they handle it in their state. I know there's somebody in Tennessee that just had some, um, pushback with successful in, in her state legislator legislature. There's a person in Colorado who's exposed us all to online databases in the li school libraries, which is a horrible thing. And I've gone through that a little bit on my website, but I've got more on that. That needs to be addressed with the next Secretary of State here in Arizona because it happens to fall under the Secretary of State. Uh, she was able to push back a bit in her um, um, school district in Colorado. So, yeah, they're always ahead of us, but we do have some successes, but they're always ahead of us. But we help each other with, with strategy and keeping each other kind of um, like what's going on. As I was on a, a conference call one with someone not long ago, and it was somebody in Ohio who was talking about the whole school and community school thing and talking about how it got in through the, the governor's, um, it's on the governor's website and all the negative things about it. Well, I swear it was like the next day, there was a bill here um, in Arizona about whole schools and community schools with Republican support. And word got around, and we got it stopped for now. I'm not taking the, I'm not taking the. Um, I, it wasn't me. It's was just word getting around. Um, so it's just kind of helping everybody across the country with any tidbits and that sort of thing. So what what is the whole school movement? Well, this is exactly what you were talking about when that superintendent said they like the child from the time it's born. Um, it sounds really nice. It will take care of all the child's needs, drop them off in the morning and give them breakfast and, and oh, yes. all their emotional and social needs. And, you know, if they need any health care, any clinics, maybe dental care. And basically the parents pick them up at six at night. So they have the child all day long. It's coming from the, it's coming from the federal government. I think I, I'd have to, I can't remember which agency, but it's very, very bad. You know, that, that sounds like um, if you've ever studied the former Soviet Union, um, as, as we found out more and more, that's what they would do. They would, they would take those children from uh, all day long, very early age, so they could indoctrinate them. 
and desensitize them. In fact, use them sometimes to actually even um, uh, to spy on their parents and and report oh, wow. them. So I mean, this is a this is a very dangerous thing, and I'm glad you glad you're working to bring that that knowledge out. Uh, you know, social and emotional learning. We hear a lot about that now too. Um, uh, I I find that wild. You know, the social and emotional learning stuff. I, I just have we just have a couple of minutes left, so I want to get through a couple of things real quickly. Um, so, if you and I'm going to ask this, and I'm asking this because I am fearlessly partisan, but it seems to me, I mean, there are Republicans that make some pretty bad decisions on this stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't find very many Democrats at all that that take the position that you you and I do. Do you find that Democrats in the public schools tend to partner up in some of these woke? Um, these woke policies? They, tell, they just all seem to be on the same page. And, you know, Republicans, and I'm not a Republican. <laughs> I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I've been a Republican. Republicans, you know, have a lot of infighting. Sure. I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I, I know. Think, believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in, in reality, that's good because we share, we share our thoughts, our concerns, um, Ultimately, I think most of us have the same goal, and the Democrats just can't seem to think on their own. It's like whatever the talking point is, that's what we're going to go with. And I'd love to, I, I said recently, I'd love to find some Democrats who will come across the aisle and help. If they see something in their schools, let me know. I'm glad to help them out or do some foyers or whatever, because I don't think all Democrats support this stuff. I think very few do. I, I agree with you, and I, I'll, I'll show you where I point to. I always point to Loudoun County, Virginia, which is mm -hmm. northern Virginia. It's north of D.C., very affluent, very blue. It's a totally blue county. And um, when they found out about CRT uh, in their schools, the woke stuff in their schools, they went absolutely ballistic mm -hmm. and, um, and, and fought, fought back against it. And I, I, I really think that most parents, if they – knew what was going on mm -hmm. and what they were hearing from some from some of our schools would really um they'd be very quite uh, quite frankly very upset well peggy i want to th uh, thank you so much for joining me today i want to i want everybody to know how to get a hold of you so um you, you got twitter what's your, your twitter at oh, um, well twitter the twitter uh handle for my website is at no pink school okay and, and then, uh, yeah, your um, website. I'm so, sorry. So, uh, my email for my website is info at notinourschools.net. Okay. And then you can go to her website at notinourschools.net. Yep. And uh, a lot of information there I think you'll find interesting, people, uh, folks. And then uh, for my social media, uh, you can go to uh, for Twitter at Rep Andy Biggs AZ. Um, Instagram at Rep Andy Biggs, Facebook. I always have to look it up because I can never remember. <laughs> Congressman Andy Biggs, Truth at Rep Andy Biggs AZ. You can go to my official uh, web page, www.biggs.house.gov. If you have the, if you want the audio version of this, so you, you're jogging or you're working out or whatever, and you want to listen to it, go to Spotify. What's the Biggs idea? And the same thing on Apple Podcasts. So. Uh, Peggy, thanks so much for what you're doing in the community. Thanks for, for working fearlessly and uh, putting a lot of uh, lot of effort into this. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it and encourage everybody to start following Peggy and get informed. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Congressman. Thank you.